Hey guys, this is James. And this is Denny from TDB, bringing you guys episode 29. Yep, and today we are reviewing another Korean tea, and it's not a green one. Um, it, this is also from Morning Crane Tea, uh, mm-hmm. Dongchon Teas. Um, Thank you, Arthur. Or actually, no, it's not from Dongchon Teas, but it is from Morning Crane Tea. Right. So he actually sourced from someone else. Oh, okay. um, so it's a yellow tea, Huang Cha. And so generally, if you're talking about like the composition of like Korean teas, um, the vast majority of Camellia sinensis, I'm not talking about corn or barley tea here, mm-hmm. um, are green teas. Um, and so, I mean, you got Sejok, Junjok, all those. Um, probably like 80 to 90% green teas. And okay. then as you go down, um, you'll have your yellow teas um, and your black teas. And so we reviewed a black tea, Hong right. Cha, a couple episodes back, um, and today we have a yellow tea. And this is supposedly different from uh, the Chinese version of the yellow tea. So it's actually very difficult to find information about. So I recommend checking out Arthur's site for some, it's some a, information about tea this tea. Tea processing and preparation is extremely ch- hard to understand even, yep. even now. Yeah, and so we're talking about a minority tea country, Korea, and a minority tea within the minority tea country. So this is definitely a rare tea. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it, let's. we haven't tasted this, so uh, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> let's do it. So we have five grams of tea, uh, dry tea leaf. We're going to go ahead and just um, uh, heat up our brewing vessels yep. and get everything nice and warm. Yeah, so I did a little bit of research on this tea, um, kind of from Arthur's site and stuff. And so one notable thing about this tea is it does have very small leaves. Um, it does. And they were picked um, before the Buddha's birthday. That's how he said it. So, my oh man, the Buddha, these were these were picked before old? you. Yeah, well, so these are nice and young and small. And they supposedly give very nice uh, chi off of it. So. Cool. And it's almost necessary, given how small the leaves are, to use a Japanese... Um, Brewing yep. vessel, which has like a, this has a fine mesh on the inside of it, so it's going to prevent any of the leaves from coming out. Yep. And uh, those that might be scoffing at the fact that, yeah. that we are using a uh, kind of like this rich chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah. Definitely. Um, almost like a, yeah. so, somewhat reminiscent and of Black kind tea. of, yeah, or some oolongs like mm-hmm. traditional Baljong or Wu even. Yeah, um, interesting. Like a very rich flavor mm-hmm. uh, or texture coming off that smell. Um, but we are not totally off base by using a Japanese teapot is the point I wanted to make <laughs> in the sense that if you look at, go to Korea, they'll use the same sort of teapot, except they'll usually have like a longer handle and they'll use a lot of, um, these guys too, which is also used in Japan. Cool. So there's a lot of overlap when we're talking about teaware there. Right. All right. So let's do it. We used boiling water and we cooled it down by doing those couple pours right there. Um, and we're going to brew this guy for about 45 seconds to a minute. And I think we're brewing up about six ounces of liquid right here. Mm-hmm. Looks lovely. Um, have you been experimenting with water recently? You know, talk about that? I have actually. Um, <clears throat> so we actually do live in Seattle, which has some of the best tap water um, in America and just in general. Um, but we, and so we traditionally use kind of like a Brita filter to do that. Um, but I've been doing some experimentation with some, uh, different types of bottled water and I'm not talking about the Kroger brand. I considered doing that test just to see how bad it would be, but I ended up saying, eh, I don't want to carry this giant jug of Kroger water to my apartment. So, um, I have experimented with Icelandic spring and, um, Fiji, yes. And my results are, they taste different. So you should do your own experimentation. Um, a lot of people say that different types of water will complement different teas. Hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, it's it's a very interesting subject and something that's been, I'd, I'd recommend some other resources. Uh, I know Marshall in, in particular, as well as Matt Cha's blog, uh, have kind of covered these topics far more extensively extensively than the last 30 seconds of TDB, but um, <laughs> it's a very, very interesting topic and one that uh, all serious tea drinkers really do need to explore. Beautiful leaves, small, 
coming off like just really dark, uh, a little bit of uh, brown and orange in there. And the actual liquid here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is a kind of a beautiful uh, orange, deep, um, maybe little notes of red. Ooh, wow. So again, it has that kind of corn barley smell to it, but with a lot more of that chocolate roasted. Yep. And so this was also picked from, there's three kind of growing regions in Korea, and this mm -hmm. is picked from Jiri Mountain, which is the Hadang growing region, um, and it's the same region. So okay. the terroir might be similar. Right. Wow. It's very, um, the high notes are strong, very rich. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I just made the one of the strangest faces I've made on TDB, but wow, ooh, this is hard to place. It's got a wonderful mouthfeel, like very silky texture. Um, very silky texture. I think it's actually kind of short lived, but not in a bad way. Um, I would put it sort of like a really just kind of a pow. Um, this almost kind of reminds me of some really really nice uh, Dian Hong, which is Yunnan black teas, like kind of like the really golden ones. Um, perhaps that's just because like this color, but it's got a really written richness of flavor that's coming out. No hint of astringency at all. Not at all. Brewed perfectly, and um, thank you. I've brewed this many times. <laughs> and uh, you know, actually, now that I am tasting this again, the it's lasting, and there's kind of a um, definitely lasting vanilla um, length to it. Really. Mm. Really wonderful uh, to drink. The texture is incredible, actually. It's very good. Yeah. Mm. This is a very, very good tea. Yeah, interesting. I think it's uh, different than what we probably had before, too, and I think that's influencing this a little bit. Believe it or not, this actually reminds me a little bit of that Darjeeling Camellia Sinensis tea that we drank. Interesting. Um, um, yeah. yeah, and I mean, if you're talking about like the oxidation of yellow teas... Um, they tend to, I think, veer more close to green teas and stuff. But looking at this, I would guess that it's a little bit more oxidized. That it kind of has that uh, sweetness and that hui gan, um, kind of like the sweetness returning to your throat and your mouth, um, a little bit more so than kind of your traditional green teas and stuff. Quite delicious. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually am really loving this. Mm. Really nice. Believe it or not, the chocolate, I don't taste. No, I, I don't. Um, um, I, yeah. yeah. And it's not even very aromatic. You know, actually, just in the cup. And there's a lingering cup smell. Um, but the texture is just incredible. Velvety, silk, silk. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think that the mm -hmm. brewing parameter is perfect. So not too hot at all. Mm -hmm. Hotness would probably bring out more of that, um, I don't know. Stringency. Yeah, bitterness. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Huh. Hard yeah. to place, but really, really good. And I'm actually getting a little bit of chi off of this guy. Definitely. Um, yeah. Which is rare for me. I usually don't get all that much chi off Something of this. Something like this. Cheese, at least this immediately. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Really beautiful uh, flavor that evolves. I'm really, really curious about this next steeping, actually, because I think it'll be telling. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious about the texture. I mean, wow. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, very so interesting. How would you pair this with anything if you were to? Um, I would probably drink this alone just so you're able yeah. to kind of like really appreciate the richness of the texture and the mouthfeel. It would be really interesting to do some side-by-side -side comparisons with this versus some other um, partially oxidized teas. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it actually kind of reminds me of white tea in the sense that um, I'm always surprised by the viscosity of white tea. I always expect the lightest, <clears throat> the, you know, well, sm smooth, wow, look at that, really turn, really deeper color. Um, experience in, in white teas are so flavorful, at least they can be, uh, and uh, I, I constantly surprise myself drinking them. So this is a this is very unique, a little hard to place. Uh, uh, some of the teas that I've had that have been hard to place have been older and uh, more metallic. So they just have tastes that I'm not used to. Uh, flavors, excuse me, that I'm not used to. I wouldn't say this is like that, but um, no. still very nice. Beautiful color. 
Yeah, just really. There's lovely. a little bit of a deeper color now, like more reddish as opposed to yeah. golden. Still very beautiful. Hmm. I'm definitely kind of getting that vanilla that you were describing now Sweet. even more stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just a little bit of that oat flavor. Hmm. Um, it's not. Uh, yeah, kind of like uh, it almost reminds me of oatmeal, but not in a kind of a, a creamier, creamier oatmeal taste. Mm -hmm. Not like your instant oatmeal. <laughs> you just like dump it in there. It's like yeah, strawberry, so, blueberry, so, yeah. raspberry. Flavor. Some people would probably associate cinnamon with oatmeal, but um, more of the oats flavor in this. Hmm. Yeah, and for me, I would still say kind of like the closest comparison would be mm. some of those like really golden, really tasty, not with a hint of astringency, Yunnan black teas, um, which I don't drink a whole lot of, to be honest, um, but this is this is quite a treat. Yeah, and totally agree about the, the energy that I'm getting off of this, very lively, um, but nice. This would be a wonderful tea to, to share, enjoy with friends. Um, uh, and it's it's kind of a little challenging tea. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, maybe it's the yellow in it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Arthur, thank you very much for um, contributing this tea to TDB. Uh, we're loving it, obviously. And yeah. And for you guys for checking us out. If someone wanted to learn more about tea, what should they do, James? Well, there's this one website called tdb.org. Um, Please check us out. There's also we also run a channel. Um, we're almost to 100 subscribers. We hopefully will be there by the time you are watching this. Um, but please check us out there. This is really quite a wonderful tea, a minority tea yeah. uh, from a minority tea country, which I kind of only said. Um, but yeah, this is a very rare treat, so I totally recommend checking this out. And I really doubt you're gonna find. Um, a yellow tea of this quality um, outside of Arthur at Morning Crane. Yeah, so go check out Morning Crane Tea, check out TDB, and go and get out there and drink some tea yourself, guys. Yep, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.